Great. Hi, everybody. Um, great to be here. Sid, great to see you again. Excited that we're, we're chatting here about, you know, Arbol and parametric insurance and all those things. So, Sid, I mean, if if you could just clarify for us, I think what, what, what you do is quite amazing. And what Arbol works on for me is, is, is quite innovative and kind of the next generation and how people, you know, manage risk as, a, as a individuals, farmers, entities, and so on. So I, I think it might be useful for people to more clearly understand what is parametric insurance. Like why, why is parametric insurance useful? What is it? Maybe just if you could explain to us exactly what it is that Arbol and parametric insurance does. Sure. And uh, thanks uh, for having me here. And it's great to see you also, Sergey. Yeah. So yeah, parametric insurance, uh, you know, at a very simple level, parametric insurance is uh, being paid based on data. So if you think about what traditional insurance is like, uh, you know, you have a flood in your house, you have a fire, whatever, there is gonna be an adjuster, a human being who shows up to your property to assess the damage. And this is true of autos, this is true of home, this is true of business insurance and a whole host of other ones. And so that's the way traditional insurance works where the loss assessment is subjective. You have a person who is going to basically use their experience to figure out how much damage you have. Now, this system has been in place for a long time, but the problem obviously is that it's subjective and there's a lot of room for deciding how much damage you actually suffered. Um, the issue tends to be is you obviously have a very different level of uh, ability to dispute that against a very large insurance company. Parametric takes all of that out and says, here's a data set. That data set can be rainfall data. It can be a satellite image. It can be an IoT sensor, something objective that can allow you to uh, hit a trigger and get you paid. So it could be something as simple as, hey, the total rainfall uh, you know, around my farm in the month of July was below eight inches. Um, I want to get paid $100,000 if that happens because that will harm my crops. And so in a nutshell, that's what parametric insurance is. Um, you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's one of those things whose time has come now this was very difficult to do back in the day. Obviously, the data sets weren't there. You know, you, you obviously want to make sure that the person who's getting paid, uh, the data has some link to their loss experienced, right? So in, take the case of weather data. If the weather data is for, you know, 100 kilometer wide grid or your entire state, that's not going to really matter for you. So for parametric insurance to work, you need the data to get more and more specific, which is where we are getting now with millions of sensors around, lots of satellites, weather data is getting better. So um, yeah, that's where parametric insurance, uh, I think that's the why it's the moment to shine for this type of insurance. It takes a lot of the inefficiencies, the delays, disputes, and often uh, also fraud that can exist in traditional insurance and takes that out of the window and says, let's make everything objective and let's make everything be being paid based on data. Yeah, I'm I'm a big believer in it. As as soon as as soon as I understood what what parametric insurance is about many years ago, I I immediately just said, you know, that that's the way of the future and there's going to be more and more data that comes around and as more and more categories of data become more and more available, more reliable and and more kind of usable for all these insurable events, that that is that is the way everybody wants everything to work because it's just going to have such solid proof, and it's 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 just a logical way that that you would make things work. Is if you have that level of proof, you would use it in these uh, insurance contexts to the benefit of the insurance company, the benefit of the user, the benefit of really the benefit of everybody at at the end of the day. So it's 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 very it's very exciting for me to yeah. see it happening. Yeah, it's uh, it, you know it's clear, and uh, you don't have to worry whether I'm going to get paid or how much I'm going to get paid if a certain event happens. Um, so a question for you, Sergey, would be, um, you know, how do you think insurance will benefit from blockchain? Yeah, I think that the appearance of that data is very important. So it is important that the data appears and that it exists at all. But if you're going to be tri triggering high value insurance contracts or even a multitude of, of medium or lower value insurance contracts, 
you, you at the end of the day are automating the control and movement of a lot of value. And, and that's really what blockchains and smart contracts and oracles excel at, right? So I, I, think, I think it's actually a very natural fit for, for, two, for two very, very specific reasons. The, the, the first reason is that you, you, you want proof and you want reliable automation. And reliable automation is what smart contracts and oracles and all these things are really about. You, you already have some mesh methods of aut automation out there, right? In a centralized server or somewhere else. And I think what people don't fully know until they unpack some of the problems being solved is to what degree the lack of reliability or the ability to tamper with that data or the ability to manipulate it or change it or, or kind of game it to the benefit of one of the parties actually affects the value of, of an insurance product, right? And that's something that I think people that are in the insurance industry and, and leaders like you, innovators that are really, you know, kind of driving that forward know very well, but, and it's, and it's also very logical and clear, but it's not immediately clear to everybody else, right? Is that you, you wouldn't want to trigger huge amounts of insurance value with unreliable data. Even if the data was out there, you would need that data to then be made reliable. And, and then the second thing that I think is, is, is quite important is that you have all these trust issues between policyholders, insurance companies, you know, all these kind of parties, even market participants that might, you know, get securitized insurance in some form at some point. And there's all these trust issues of how do I know, right? How do I know I'll get paid out? How do I know you're going to actually pay me? What are my guarantees? And I think with creating a data-driven parametric insurance product in the smart contract format does is it allows you to turn, turn to your user and say, here are my guarantees. I have cryptographic guarantees. I have these data-driven guarantees. I have all these methods of proof. And in fact, I can't manipulate um, the outcomes here, right? And, and, and that's really what the user wants. Like if I wanted an insurance policy relationship with, with an entity, I wouldn't want that relationship based on a logo. I wouldn't want like, you have a nice logo and I'm just going to trust you. And I, I don't think that, fundamentally speaking, a rational economic actor, given the choice, would want that relationship if, if they could have the more reliable, more cryptographically assured relationship of I'm guaranteeing an outcome using physics and math and data and all these methods of proof that even I can't manipulate. And so that's, that's, that's really the next level of the insurance industry, um, in, in my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, we we face this issue all the time. You know, you, if you operate in emerging markets, the level of trust is extremely low between these different participants. But even in developed markets, you know, as these parametric insurance contracts get more complicated, let's say they're using a bunch of satellite data and IoT sensor data, you know, who is timestamping this? There are different parties who want to make sure this is um, sound and a distributed ledger is an ideal use case for that because you want the, the reinsurer will want to make sure that, okay, all this data came in when you said it did. The policy holder wants to make sure that they got paid because there's thousands of data points coming in at different times. And so as we get more complex, as we start to personalize these insurance policies to the user's experience, but still keep it data and objective, blockchain becomes more and more essential. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. So now, now, now that we're kind of going in this direction and, and you know, I know you have a lot of insight about the insurance industry and the evolution and what's going on there. So from, from your point of view, seeing all these kind of things come together and just, you know, what, what, what are you seeing in the insurance industry? How, how do you see it all evolving as an industry? Sure. So, the insurance industry, you know, for a long time has been in a almost state of suspended animation. They are well protected by regulation. There is, uh, you know, often been not a huge impetus to innovate. And that's been changing rapidly over the last five to 10 years. Uh, insure tech, is, you know, has become a buzzword. There's a lot of companies trying to make different parts of the insurance process more efficient. So claims processing, for example, is a big area of focus. You know, it takes, it's very expensive and the way it was done was all, all old school paper. So that's one area. 
parametric is obviously, as we discussed, another big area. And where we, you know, where we see insurance heading to is converging towards more of the uh, sort of Wall Street model of things like securitization, things like, you know, um, making sure that the user has, uh, you know, clarity over what's happening and that the insurance company can't just decide on, hey, I'm not going to pay you because of X, Y, Z reason or find some loopholes in your contract and say that that means that you're not getting paid. So there's a move towards, you know, more clarity for the user. There's a move towards uh, just having uh, more objectivity in the process and a big move towards just being more user friendly. And this is something that's often missed even in the blockchain space. Uh, you know, you have uh, companies like obviously Lemonade and others that are, have been trying to make the user experience because, you know, let's be honest, nobody enjoys, you know, going out and buying insurance. And, it, you know, you want people to feel that this is a simple, easy process to get this coverage and they know what they're getting and not be surprised later when companies don't pay up. Um, you know, during this COVID time, you'll see lots of there have been lots and lots of lawsuits happening and some companies have even gone bankrupt because their insurers didn't pay. This is the kind of stuff that, you know, um, things like data and blockchain will really start to address that you, you shouldn't be in a case where you purchase a policy and you think you're going to get some coverage and then later you find out that it's not there. Um, and I think the other big sort of movement in insurance is going to be uh, to really start to address some of these big issues that we are facing as a society, things like climate change. And, you know, you have a trillion dollars of just crops in the world that get no insurance annually. That's a huge gap. There's lots and lots of gaps like this where, you know, insurance is very well trafficked in the urban sort of wealthy areas but a huge parts of the world don't have insurance. And it's very hard for you to plan for the future if you cannot reduce some of these random risks, right? If, a, you know, if the next storm can wipe out your farm or livelihood and that'll set you back years, there's, it's going to be very hard to develop that region of the world. And so I think insurance is going to need to start addressing a lot of these big gaps that exist especially with things like climate change and uh, we have pandemics, lots of different risks that are, that seemed so distant and so far away. And now they're, you know, coming much, much closer to our, uh, you know, awareness. I, I absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. I, th I think, I think at the end of the day that there's, there's going to be a huge demand for insurance that has clarity about counterparty risk and has clarity about how people are going to actually pay you out defined in extremely clear terms, ideally around data, right? And I think that that getting polished in certain markets and then making its way into emerging markets is, is going to underpin a lot of economic activity that, that is, is, is in and of itself like worthwhile from the point of view of what blockchains and smart contracts and oracles can do for society, right? Like the fact that there are all these people that don't have a way to manage these serious risks related to weather. I mean, we see storms now in the Caribbean on a regular basis. You know, temperatures are increasing in certain parts of the planet here and there, and, and any number of other risks, right, against which you do have a lot of, of, a lot of very solid data where there, there's kind of like a technologically enforced parallel legal system that now enables insurance to make its way to all of these people that, that previously wouldn't have had it. And, and that, to me, is, is extremely exciting because it's, it's really going to have a life-changing impact for some of them. And, and all they're trying to do is kind of pr pr pursue their economic destiny in a, in a kind of a noble profession, which is, is, is essentially feeding people, right? So it's, it's actually a worthwhile thing for all of our kind of technological, technocratic work to, 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 to lend, lend a helping hand to. All right. Um... I guess uh, for you, uh, I would ask, you know, obviously DeFi has been uh, very much talked about recently and, uh, you know, it's been gaining traction. How do you see DeFi interacting with insurance? I think a lot of the things you said before about securitizing insurance is a very logical, logical path that uh, I, I can't fully understand why it hasn't been pursued in the traditional markets. But taking insurance cash flows 
and turning them into collateral, turning them into individual economic units in the form of tokens or in the form of these kind of units that can then get traded or turned into tokens or moved around within the DeFi ecosystem, which is, which is actually very hungry for new collateral, especially collateral that can diversify risk away from cryptocurrency volatility, right? And in, insurance cash flows are, are, are pretty stable. And if, if you suddenly have insurance as a smart contract type generating a lot of proof about its relationship with the outside world, as far as weather events and whether the insurance got paid out and the premiums end up going in and, and, and all these kind of dynamics, you, you, end up with, you, you end up with a very kind of large and growing market that's very hungry for collateral that isn't cryptocurrencies. And then, then, then you have decentralized insurance appear and, and basically provide, provide that to, to, to a huge demand, right? And so it, it, it makes sense to me that decentralized insurance is developed in a way to solve real world problems. And, and in, in certain cases, cyber risk problems, in certain other cases, weather events, and in, in many different cases where you can prove things with data, of which there are more and more. And then I think there is a, a huge opportunity to take all of that insurance and essentially sell it to a market as a final step, right? To securitize it and turn it into an asset that goes into a market. And that's how insurance companies end up um, getting their revenue, right? So that's, that's, that's a way that insurance companies that can underwrite the right risk and make the right relationships for cash flows can, can have um, a very well-earned kind of payday and the market can get collateral and, and, and that'll drive them to create even more insurance to the benefit of more people. So it's, it's kind of a cyclical process where I see DeFi creating a market that accelerates the creation of insurance to the benefit of, of, of really everybody at, at the end of the day. Um, and so that's, you know, I, I, think it has, I think it has a role to play. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And we need new capital, new types of risk that are hedged in uh, non-traditional channels. Right, completely, completely agree. So it's 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 exciting what what you're doing. I, I'm 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 a huge fan, and I'm really impressed by the fact that you you have this live and working in both developed markets and emerging markets. And it's it's really very exciting for me that you're you're able to use the blockchain infrastructure for something that is so tied to people's livelihood and tied to how they can manage their ability to succeed in an enterprise, right? And that's that's kind of a fundamental thing that I think people don't always fully get about insurance is that ins insurance enables people to like sail across oceans and open businesses and keep those businesses running when something negative happens and, and, and things like that and, and, and pursue their economic destiny. So I'm, 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 I'm eager to hear like, what, what do you see happening next for our bowl? How do you see that evolving? You know, what are, what are some of the next steps or ideas that, that, that you guys are, are thinking through? Sure. Yeah. So, we, uh, you know, we went uh, live uh, about six months ago. We've done uh, tens of millions of risk through the platform just in that time. We have a footprint of, you know, uh, thousands of farmers now on the platform. And to us, that was a starting point. We have programs in uh, US, Latin America, uh, Southeast Asia. And we see ourselves expanding to, uh, to um, all the different regions in the world where you need this, uh, you know, coverage. So many parts of Eastern Europe, Australia, South America, you know, um, and that only helps to further diversify the cash flows. Going back to your DeFi point, it only, uh, you know, makes these cash flows more attractive, the more diversification you can get. So in the agriculture space, we see a lot of opportunity in a lot of these regions and we'll be making a strong push in those. But uh, we actually see, um, you know, tremendous opportunity in a lot of different uh, other industries and we're already starting to make headway there. Because once you abstract it out to data-driven payouts, you know, a lot of different data sets become open for coverage. So, for example, in the renewable space, if you have a wind uh, farm or a solar farm, you know, you need, uh, you need coverage against things like cloud cover against wind speeds that make your cash flows volatile and increase your cost of capital. So, you know, it's a, insurance can serve as a way to smooth out the cash flows and make renewable power more available. 
for for uh, someone trying to start one. Um, you know, on top of that, we have uh, products like we're working on in the marine space. So lots of the uh, logistics like shipping and ports are often hit by weather delays, and these delays then cascade into huge fines or costs for all the companies operating. So, you know, we see maritime logistics in general as a big area as well. And, uh, you know, there's a number of different products we're exploring in the small business uh, interruption space. You know, storms hit your business, that data is all there, power outages, and uh, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, these days network downtime due to cyber issues or um, cloud uh, computing issues. So. We, you know, I see Arbol as uh, basically becoming a platform for um, any type of data-driven insurance growing into that. And we just want to plant, uh, you know, uh, real live existing businesses in each area and the overall portfolio that comes out of it becomes more and more attractive to later securitize as we grow volumes. And uh, for us, you know, we, the, the opportunity set is, uh, is endless. We just have to execute in each of these industries. And um, it, it takes time because we're working with a lot of old school industries, but at the same time, I think the rewards are great from a standpoint of just helping a, a huge number of people, uh, you know, get coverage that just did not have before and give them some peace of mind as to at least, you know, we can cover droughts, we can cover low wind speeds for a wind operator, or we can cover too much rainfall for a port. Um, and so, you know, there, there's a lot of these, uh, you know, markets that we are heading into. And for us, you know, a um, company like Chainlink is the, uh, you know, Chainlink is uh, going to be an integral part of building these oracles that what we were discussing before with regards to having data that's objective, clear, and uh, secure, uh, you know, using Chainlink to essentially link these different uh, you know, derivatives and insurance contracts as we grow from here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, all the categories you just mentioned are, are all categories that I've, as, as I've, as I spent some time in the insurance industry, talking to people about building smart contracts and, and building these things, all of these things just seemed so clearly um, attainable to me. And it seemed, it seemed something that I, I, I just I just immediately thought that this is the way that this all should work, right? And I and so I'm 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 truly thrilled to see a team uh, like you and your caliber and and your kind of seriousness and the approach that you have to building a platform that can plug in all these data sources, have them evaluated within within a platform and and pay that out to various other kind of policyholders and all these other types of folks, right? That's 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 an extremely impressive thing to me, and I I think that. The amount of data that's that's going to continue appearing is is just going to grow. I think that the amount of data that we will be able to properly validate through Chainlink and through our methodologies around how do you prove that an event happened, in addition to having data, right? Like I think there's one one level where it's we have data and that's that's good and the data exists, and then there's another level where the data has become sufficiently validated and sufficiently kind of provable and proven and a source of definitive truth in order to be usable in an insurance context. And once, once that data reaches that point is when I feel like you unlock some of these use cases is when you, when you, when you reach a point where, yes, now I can in an automated way trigger this policy because I am assured that this data input, which is really like a, a a certain large, even half per half of the policy, right? There's the logic of the policy and then there's the proof of what happened in relation to the policy. And I mean, even, even aside from all the efficiencies in relation to claim management and all the transparency stuff that you get whenever you turn that insurance product into a tokenized, some kind of like tokenized insurance that can be put into the market. I think the, the user experience is just so much clearer to me as how I would form a trust relationship with an insurance product, right? Like if, if, if anyone had a choice between a trust relationship where there was a logo or there was a math-based crypto, cryptographically proven and kind of validated data-driven uh, process, that's what every rational actor would choose. So I, I can absolutely see this becoming the new standard in insurance 
and how people approach um, managing their risk, even even all over the world in in all of these categories. So it's it's very exciting. I'm 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 very grateful that we can work with you and that we're part of this together with you. And it's 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 truly great to see um, progress being made in this industry in the way that you're doing it. And it's 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 really a pleasure to to chat with you about this. And it's it's very impressive. So 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 thank you for working with us on this. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I, I see a lot more uh, collaboration with Chainlink going forward as we expand into regions and products. Uh, it's been great. Wonderful.